you've probably heard it said that you should always give your best, always try your hardest and do 100%. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about why those attitudes are not particularly helpful and may be a recipe for developing anxiety and depression. Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the problem of always trying your hardest and always uh, giving your best in situations and how having those types of attitudes can be uh, quite damaging and can contribute to things like stress, anxiety, and depression. But before I get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I'm a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada. And this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a substitute or replacement for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those things out of the way, let's start talking about the problem of always trying your hardest and always uh, doing your best or trying to do your best. Uh, now you've probably seen them in memes and on t-shirts, these inspirational quotes to uh, inspire people to always do their best. So uh, no longer is 100% good enough. You have to give 110%. Uh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Uh, no days off. Those types of quotes. And at the heart of these quotes is this notion and this idea that we should always be giving our all. We should always be working to our maximum capacity, always trying to do our best, to work our hardest. But have you ever thought about whether or not that's even realistic? I mean, this may sound really good and really inspiring as a quote. It may be, you know, what you hear at a motivational speaker conference where you have somebody up on stage with a headset mic and they're, you know, rah, rah, and giving you all of these inspiring quotes and telling you, you know, things like live every day like it's your last, always give 110%, you know, no days off. It all sounds really good and really inspiring. The problem is it's completely untrue and it's completely unrealistic. There's no way that you can possibly work or live at your maximum capacity and your maximum ability all the time. And there's three main problems with this attitude of always give hundred percent. The first is that things tend to break down as you approach a hundred percent. You tend to be less efficient, you tend to be less capable as you start hitting up against that hundred percent capacity mark. Um, think about the way you drive a car. Right? You've got your car. Now your car has the capacity to rev up to 7,500 RPMs and hit maximum horsepower at that high level of your engine running. But is that the way you drive your car, right? Do you always drive your car by slamming on the accelerator and revving the engine to the red line and, and driving it super hard all the time? Well, you probably don't, and for good reason, because if you drove your car that way, it's going to be far less efficient, it's going to use up way more gas, and it's likely going to break down a lot sooner. And you're going to have to stop for all sorts of repairs and problems because your car was never designed to always be driven to its maximum capacity. And people know that, and that's why they don't drive their cars that way. Yet, somehow, we think it's a good idea to drive ourselves that way. That we should always be trying to rev ourselves to our maximum capacity and push as hard as we can all the time. Well, if you do that, you're going to find that you're going to be a lot less efficient, and you're going to break down and burn out. Because 
we have a limited amount of capacity. We have a limited amount of energy and time. And so if you're always pushing yourself and always draining yourself because you're at 100% all the time, you're going to need to stop and you're going to break down and you're going to burn out. So it's not possible to function at 100% uh, all the time without breakdown in capacity. Now, even if you could function at 100% all the time, suppose you had, in, in sort of this hypothetical world, you had unlimited energy, unlimited time uh, to function at 100% all the time. Be great. That's the solution, right? Not quite. Because uh, even if you're able to function at 100% all the time, there's a second problem. And the second problem is that functioning at 100% all the time gives you no capacity for any other demands that come to you. So uh, suppose hypothetically you could fill your life with 100% capacity. You're completely maxed out all the time with 100% responsibilities and tasks that you need to do. Okay, great, I'm able to do all of those tasks. Well, what happens if something unexpected comes up and you have a new task that gets added to your plate. So you're functioning at 100% at work and your boss asks you to do an additional project. Well, you have no capacity to take on that project because you're already maxed out. And so uh, this idea of always trying to, to do 100%, always trying to work at your hardest and your maximum capacity, it's really designed to give you a sense of control and power and that I can accomplish everything. But in reality, all it does is create a sense of helplessness because I'm always afraid of anything else getting added to my plate because my plate is already full. And so I'm constantly running at this high stress level, high pressure level, uh, no moment to take a break because I have to do everything and get everything done, but always in fear of what if something else gets added to my plate and I can't do it. My cup is full and I can't take on anything else. Well, we know that life will throw things at you. They'll throw extra demands and extra expectations. And if you don't have the capacity to do it, things are going to fall apart. And the third main problem with always trying to function at 100% sort of relates to that as well, in that uh, suppose you're functioning at 100% and you have filled your life with 100% capacity, 100% expectations, and 100% responsibility. What happens then if you have a drop in capacity? Suppose you get sick. Suppose um, you have conflict in your relationships. Uh, suppose you get stuck in traffic. Well, you're already maxed out at 100%, but then you have these things in your life that, that drain your capacity. So maybe you're not able to function at 100% because you get sick and you only have you know, 85% of your capacity and resources. Well, you can only function at 85%, but you have 100% responsibilities that you have set up for yourself. You're not going to be able to achieve those responsibilities. You're not going to be able to do those things, and you're going to fail, which is going to just make you feel worse and set you, set you up for increased stress, increased pressure, um, and potentially getting down on yourself. So these are the three main problems with this aspirational notion of always trying your hardest, always doing your best. If you do that, if you hold those attitudes, you're going to break down. Uh, 
you're not going to have any capacity to take on anything new in life and you're not going to be able to manage if you ever experience any drop in your capacity. So while it's inspirational and nice to think this way, it's completely unrealistic. Uh, you've probably heard the metaphor, you know, life is a marathon. Uh, that's actually a metaphor that I like because I think it's true, right? You have to think about life in the long run, in, in the long term, and what is a sustainable way of functioning in the long term. So yes, we can, we can function at 100%, but it should only be for short periods of time. And then to pull back and, and take a break from being at 100%. So maybe the goal should be to function around 70% or 60%. Because that way you have some capacity to take on more if you need to. And you have some reservoir just in case you have a drop in your capacity. So going back to the metaphor of uh, life being a marathon, imagine approaching a marathon with the attitude of, I've got to give 100% while running this marathon. So the gun goes off and you sprint from the start and you run as hard as you can, as fast as you can. You give 100%. Well, you probably get to about three, 400 meters, maybe 500 meters, and then you get so exhausted that you collapse. And it takes you a while to catch your breath and to sort of regroup, and you pick yourself up, and you sprint again. You give 100%, all of your capacity. Maybe only make it 200 meters this time before you collapse and you're exhausted and it takes you maybe even longer to catch your breath and to get yourself together and you pick yourself up and you sprint again and this time maybe you only make it a hundred meters and it takes you three times as long to recover and you get up and you go again and you just keep collapsing and you don't get as far each time and it takes you even longer to recover Meanwhile, the bloke that started behind you is just sort of plodding away at about 30% of their capabilities, blows right past you. They're going to finish that marathon way quicker than you are. They're going to finish that marathon in a far more efficient way and in a, in a much smarter way than you are by trying to race and sprint and run the whole thing at 100% of your capacity. So uh, don't give in to the memes. Don't give in to the t-shirt slogans. Um, you should not be giving 110%. You should not be trying your hardest all the time because that's just a recipe for a lot of stress in your life, a lot of anxiety in your life, and a lot of failure. And those are the types of things that we want to try to avoid. So I hope that makes sense. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas about this. So please leave me some comments in the comments section down below. If you've been enjoying my videos and would like to see more, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and you'll be alerted every week when I post a new video. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I will see you in the next one.